Hey friends, the biblical feast of Sukkot, also known as Feast of Tabernacles, is coming up soon. And today I wanted to show you guys how I decorate my desk to look like a suka. Before I jump into sharing with you guys how I decorate my desk, I wanted to share a few scriptures about this biblical feast. So if you go to Leviticus 23, this is kind of what is known as like the Feast of God chapter because it talks about the Sabbath, which is one of his feasts, and then all of the feasts that are at specific times throughout the year. Um, and so the first scripture I wanted to share is actually from that chapter, verses 33 and 34. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of the seventh new moon or new month is the festival of Sukkot for seven days to the Lord. And then if you jump down in that same chapter to verse 39, um, I'm going to read through verse 43. It says, On the fifteenth day of the seventh new moon or month, when you gather in the fruit of the land, celebrate the festival to the Lord for seven days. On the first day is a rest, and on the eighth day is a rest. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of good trees, branches of palm trees, twigs of leafy trees, and willows of the stream, and shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. And you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord for seven days in the year, a law forever in your generations. Celebrate it in the seventh new moon. Dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native-born in Israel dwell in booths, so that your generations know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them up out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. The last passage I wanted to share is from Deuteronomy. It's chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. Perform the festival of Sukkot for seven days after the ingathering from your threshing floor and from your wine press. And you shall rejoice in your festival, you and your son and your daughter, and your male servant and your female servant, and the Levite and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow who are within your gates. For seven days you shall celebrate to the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses, because the Lord your God does bless you in all your increase and in all the work of your hands, and you shall be only rejoicing. I really like how much these scriptures talk about rejoicing during this festival and something that I heard a teacher say once is during Sukkot we can celebrate God's sustenance, his provision, and his faithfulness. And so it's a beautiful celebration time with the Father where, like Leviticus 23 said, we look back to when he brought Israel through the wilderness, had them dwell in booths, but also look forward to when our Messiah, Yeshua Jesus, will dwell with us and will be with him. Because of Leviticus talking about dwelling in booths for seven days, many people build a sukkah during this time. They will also go camping. Um, I will show a few pictures of that after this video. I personally have never been able to build a sukkah um, or go camping. One year I was talking to my friend and she was sharing with me how she decorated her desk and I believe she sent me a picture of it. And so for the past couple years or so I've been decorating my desk sort of to look like a suka. Um, and it's just I feel like a fun way to celebrate this feast whether you have a suka outside too or not. Um, it's just a way to make it more special. So I, with all that said, I want to share with you guys how I decorate my desk, hopefully inspire you. Um, and I'd love to hear in the comments down below if you celebrate Sukkot, how you make this feast festival, whether you're the only one in your family who celebrates or your whole family celebrates part of your family, the things you do to commemorate this feast with the Father. So with all that said, let's get into it. So for this project, you really only need one thing, and that is a sheet. Um, I am using this one that has like a green marble pattern on it, but I'm going to use the flip side because it's pretty much just white, like you can still kind of see the pattern through it, but it's pretty much white. Um, and that is what I have and am able to use. So white does look nice and resembles kind of that suka look, but use what you have and what you like. Um, and then I'm going to decorate. And so this is where it's really up to you if you want to go out and buy things want to make your own things I'm just going to share with you guys what I have so I have these fairy lights they used to have well that looks so messed up they used to have a different decoration on them but I changed it and I hot glued some fake leaves to them the batteries are currently for you can clean that and replace them they still sort of work though so that's kind of what they look like they're really cute and then I have a couple of jars that I'm going to put these thick flowers in so I have these kind of daisy like ones and then I don't even know like what these are but they're basically like plastic um so i just kind of mix them up and arrange them in there i thought there was 
terms at Dollar Tree, so very inexpensive. And then I have a letter board that I got um, a couple to a few years back, and usually I'll put like Happy Sukkot or something like that on it and then put it on top. So yeah, like I said, the sheet is really the only thing you need. A white sheet does look nice, but if you don't have a white sheet, use what you have. Um, or if you're able to go get something, go get something if you don't have like any extra sheets available. Um, a blanket would even work. Just use what you got. This is just what I'm doing. You can totally make this work. And even if you don't have any decorations, it would still, you know, look kind of like a suka. And you can even put like fake branches on top if you want to do that. Fairy lights that aren't decorated, that are decorated. Do what you can. Do what you think would look pretty and would just kind of, you know, be very suka themed. And with that said, let's get into how I drape the blanket. Oh, the, blah, the sheet. Let's get into how I drape the sheet on my desk and decorate. This is what my desk looks like and it works very well for what I'm going to be doing because it is open at the bottom. Um, so I don't know if you have a desk and you're watching this video um, and it may be um, not having an open space at the bottom. You can still watch this and see if it might work for your desk. Um, I hope that you can make it work somehow. But the first thing I'm going to do is clean off my desk. Um, Probably up there too, just because that looks, oh man, <laughs> kind of junky. Um, but yeah, just get everything off of here so that I can get ready to decorate. Okie dokie, so now my desk is looking a lot cleaner. And honestly, I don't remember if I kept my little cup, I can't even think of the word, cup of pencils and things there. And also this thing of washi tape and it has a glue stick in it at the moment. I'm going to leave it there and the decorations on and see how it looks. Um, but yeah, just make sure everything is pretty much clear and then we can begin decorating. So I have moved the chair out of the way of my desk so it is now completely clear and I have grabbed my sheet and I'm going to go ahead and drape it over the top long ways with it hanging down in the middle of it but still leaving an opening on the bottom about half that space there or a little bit more. So I'm going to show you guys me doing that and then kind of explain some tips and tricks on how to get it to look right. Ta-da! This is the final result and basically the base of your desk suka decoration. Um, so there are a few things that I would recommend doing to help make this process a lot easier. The first thing is to make sure your sheet is going longwise or blanket, so not the short. You want it to be you know, this way long when you're placing it on your desk. Also, try to make sure it's centered. Another thing that I did that was super helpful um, while filming, I don't know if I've ever done this before when doing this, usually I just kind of bunch it once I get it on the desk. I bunched it up and laid it across the desk and then pulled it down right there as you saw in the middle. Um, this made it go so much quicker and it still has the same look as when I've done it before. So those are just a few quick tips for that. Um, you can play around with it, um, just get it to look how you want it. The first time I did it, you know, I just draped it, bunched it, and I was like, wow, this really looks like a suka. So just have fun with it and then have fun with the decorations. Write your own sign, your own message, write down your favorite verses and put it on there. As like a little sign, do whatever you want. Get some fake leaves, even real leaves. If you're that kind of person and you want some nature indoors, there are ways of preserving leaves um, and that you can search on YouTube and such um, if you want to do something like that. But I'm going to show you guys how I decorate mine. And this is the finished result, you guys. Very simple and easy to do, and it just really makes things look really pretty, fall-themed, and ready for Sukkot. So to reiterate, I have these jars of flowers, my lettering board, which I'll probably change when I actually decorate for Sukkot to say something like Happy Sukkot, 
Um, but you could, like I said earlier, letter a quote, a verse, um, whatever you want to do. I have these nice little lights, and then I also have my show bar. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found some inspiration for decorating for Sukkot. This is super personal, uh, personalizable, if that's even a word. So I hope that you are able to do this. If you do, I'd love to see pictures. Um, my Instagram is at Growing in Yeshua Designs. So if you're on Instagram, please send me any pictures you have or tag me. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a blessed fall feast season with the Father. Shalom and God bless. Bye.